We goof up some of our holidays, too. Look at Easter. What is Easter supposed to be about? The resurrection of Christ. How the big giant bunny get involved in that? <laughs> I don't remember reading about him in the Bible story. <laughs> and it's a big bunny delivering multicolored eggs and candy to the kids. Probably should be a big magic chicken. I had a big fight with one of my friends about that. He said, Brian, it can't be the Easter chicken because chickens have wings. They couldn't carry the baskets. <laughs> That's your argument right there. <laughs> carry the baskets? I don't remember bunnies having hands either there, idiot. But I'm done with the family holiday. Done. All right, not just that week was so bad, the lead up to it from Christmas till Easter, same conversation with my in laws anytime they called. Any in law, every time, same conversation. This Easter, we are going to get you an Easter bunny costume. <gasps> no, you can dress up like an Easter bunny. You're funny, you're a comedian. We'll all chip in and get you an Easter bunny costume. <gasps> No, it'll be funny. You're funny. You're a comedian. The children love you. We'll all chip in, get you an Easter bunny costume. You go, oh, you can be a funny bunny. <laughs> and I go, ah, wait a minute. What about this? What about instead? What if I go out, I get a Jesus costume, and I come back in three days? <laughs> I'm not good at keeping jobs. <laughs> Even my first job when I graduated college. Um, so I graduated, and uh, but I thought with a college degree I would get some sort of grown-up job, something boring, nine to five, I don't know. Best job I could land when I graduated college was an Easter bunny at the mall. <laughs> and I'll be honest, this backdrop has given me some severe flashbacks of that job. <laughs> They, they hired me. In the interview, they even said, like, well, Mr. Harden, we'll, we'll take you, but to be honest, you're, you're overqualified. I'm like, all right, is that because I went to college? They're like, no, you passed the drug test. <laughs> no one's done that yet. You might have my job at the end of this. <laughs> they were asking me serious job interview questions. They had their paper out, like, so, Mr. Harden, um, where do you see yourself in five years? I don't know, Santa? <laughs> Thought this job been in an Easter. I didn't know there was a five-year plan, so. <laughs> My boss was 15 years old. <laughs> that got messy. Getting yelled at, like, you need to get to work on time. Like, well, then stop asking me to pick you up from school. <laughs> the biggest word about being an Easter bunny, kids do not like the bunny. Moms, you want the picture with your kid and the bunny. That kid is used to seeing a fluffy little cute bunny Goes to the mall, now it's six foot tall, doesn't blink. That's demonic. <laughs> I had a toddler not wanting the picture with me. The mom is forcing him on my lap. The kid's already crying. Runs away, she pulls him back up by his shirt collar, throws him back on my lap. He's kicking, screaming, crying, trying to get away. She's strong holding him on my lap. This is going on for 10 minutes. I feel so bad for this kid, I finally yell. I'm like, hey, stop it, leave him alone. He doesn't want it. <laughs> but I'm in this giant bunny head, so all they heard was <laughs> And they still couldn't hear me, so I finally just rip off the bunny head. They both look at me traumatized, scared to death. And that's the picture the photographer took. It's also explain religion to my children. Religious holidays. That's one of the hardest ones to ever explain to my kids, religious holidays. Like Easter. Easter.
Easter, listen, we celebrate a little bit different in Ireland. In Ireland, we celebrate Easter slightly differently than you do in America, because in America, you hide eggs. <laughs> you celebrate one of the holiest days of the year by hiding poultry. <laughs> But then I went back, I read the book, I understood that on Good Friday, Jesus died for our sins. Uh, while he was gone, all his friends hid the eggs. Um, <laughs> Easter Sunday, he rolls again. He said, where did you put the eggs, lads? Where did you? Where are the eggs? Where are the, Peter, where did you, come on, where are the eggs? Peter, where are the eggs? Yeah, Judas, I know you know where they are. Peter, where? So my kids are spoiled. So I spent time, got this big bag of eggs that I was up to like four in the morning hand painting them the night before. And you can't just throw your eggs about your yard willy nilly, because kids are spoiled. We want to give them a good experience. We have to have a strategy with every location. Like let me take this one egg and I'll, I'll put it here behind the flower pot. Because when the sun drifts by at approximately 11.14, it'll shine on that egg, create a glow on my son's heart that can only be matched if Santa Claus and Elmo got together and threw him his own party at the Chapter Puppy Firework Factory, all right? <laughs> Let me take the blue egg and move it far away from the red egg, because they're gang colors apparently, right? And we can't have those mixing. <laughs> but about 10 eggs in, you don't care anymore, do you? Like, oh, you know what? I'll be here all day. That's ridiculous. What's that, poison ivy? Who doesn't love to scratch? <laughs> Who doesn't love to scratch? <laughs> now, my son, he's a bit slow, so he's got nothing in his basket. It's getting dark. You feel bad for him, so you kind of have to help him out a wee bit, right? You're like, oh look, come here. If, if you look hard enough, maybe you'll find that the Easter Bunny left one right behind the flat. If you look hard enough, maybe you'll find, maybe, maybe, you know what? It's right there, look, it's right there. There it is. That's a pink egg on green grass. Can you not see that? Stop picking your nose. And uh, I need to, we have a CVS around here? Just right, one on every corner, just like, just like everywhere. And if it's not, it's a Rite Aid and a Walgreens. I don't get CVS, I don't get the whole structure. Because in the back, it's, a, it's always a pharmacy and all the health aids. But then the whole rest of the store, Twinkies, potato <laughs> chips, booze. I don't know if they care about my health or not. No one knows what CVS stands for. I think it's just candy and vitamins and stuff. <laughs> Family friendly version for you fine people at Dry Bar Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> keep, it, keep it family friendly tonight. But the, <laughs> and by the way, at Easter, this, I went there on Easter, they had a whole section of Cadbury cream eggs. You guys know what that is? Like, right, it's like chocolate-covered goo, <laughs> sugar snot. <laughs> not good for you, but not to worry. Next dial over, diabetes test kit. It's a jobs program. Oh, man. So I grew up, uh, I grew up in Bellevue, Washington, you guys. It's a suburb outside Seattle. Are you from there? Seattle. It's not the same place. Nope. Uh-uh. I'm just gonna let that go. I said you guys get a pass, I'll give you a pass on not knowing geography in the state that you're from. I'll give you a pass on that. <laughs> it's all good, man. No, I grew up in Bellevue, Washington. It's a beautiful part of the country. I think it's the best place in the world. No offense, I loved it. Um, not a lot of diversity growing up in Bellevue. So I could get away with doing crazy stuff and just say it was part of my culture. <laughs> because nobody wanted a lawsuit. <laughs> I would lie all the time. I'd be like, listen, officer, it's perfectly normal in black culture to jump out of bushes and scare the elderly. <laughs> That's just how we do, homie. <laughs> I tried that on my wife when we got married. I was like, honey, in black culture, men do not do dishes or change diapers. I'm sorry. <laughs> We don't do any chores that start with the letter D. I didn't write the rules, but it's in the handbook. I gotta follow them. 
I've changed so many diapers because I said that to her. <laughs> you guys, as a result. So anyway, growing up in Bellevue, fantastic. Uh, one time I remember me and my brother were at this church activity where we were painting Easter eggs for homeless people. Think about that for a minute, you guys. It's like borderline disrespectful. It's very condescending. Here, homeless dude, a decorative Easter egg. I hope it keeps you warm and solves your financial problems. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, see, we're rich, so we paint our food. <laughs> Try to stay dry. Happy Easter. <laughs> it's disrespectful. So I wasn't taking it seriously. I was just writing the names of my favorite rap groups on the eggs. Like the Wu-Tang Clan. Loved listening to them growing up. And this lady sees what I'm doing. She gets one of my eggs. She brings it over to me. She's like, Lom, I don't know what Wu-Tang means, but I'm pretty sure it's not appropriate. <laughs> this is where I could lie and use my minority status to my advantage. I was like, actually, Wu-Tang is an African tribe. <laughs> it's part of my culture. <laughs> Please respect that. She was very apologetic. She's like, Lom, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I took the lie a step further, you guys. I told her that in Africa, we throw up a W sign and say Wu-Tang, it means hello. <laughs> and she believed me. The next week in church, this lady gets up to give a talk. She's like, good morning, brothers and sisters. Wu-Tang. <laughs> Wu-Tang is an African greeting that I learned from Lom over there. <laughs> I'm very cultured. I shot her in the head with a dart, you guys. I had to. I was like, how's that for an African greeting? She left me no choice. You know what holidays really changed in my, in my lifetime? Culturally, Easter. Because my nieces and nephews, they, they open, pre these kids expect presents for Easter. I go, oh, times have changed, man. When I was a kid, my father didn't even color the Easter eggs. He just bought brown eggs. <laughs> and he hit them in the same spot every year, behind the mayonnaise in the fridge. That was, uh, he was, you found them good, make me an omelet. Okay, I got you. I got you, pops. Don't ever buy marijuana from the Easter Bunny. <laughs> Hang on, I want to keep that joke fresh. <laughs> Can't get any more of this till March. So uh, she was up in Can Canada, that's where she is, and it was the first day of spring, so I sent her a, a little text, and I was like, hey, sweetie, first day of spring, hope things are warming up for you up there in Canada, love you, mom, and I put like a little Easter bonnet, little Easter bonnet emoji, you know, and sent it off. Ding! And two seconds later, I get back, thanks, mom, uh, why'd you send me an emoji of a taco? <laughs> I, I didn't. <laughs> It's an Easter bonnet. And she was like, uh, put your glasses on, it's taco. <laughs> and she was right. <laughs> so close, so close. Then you know, around Easter time, we start talking about the Last Supper, and I was like, oh, I got one. She's like, please don't, please don't. I'm like, no, I just think that the Last Supper is like the most uncomfortable, awkward meal in history. Right, because Jesus is wanting to make this a very special moment for his 12 closest friends. And he's using some metaphors and he says, look, this is my body and this is my blood. It's, it's for you, take and remember me. Eat it and drink it. Problem is, these are 12 idiots that have not understood a word he has said for the past three years. They have no idea what he's talking about. You can see it right there in the text. It's, it's almost the subtext. They're just kind of like, wait a second, does Jesus want us to eat him? Like, I'm not sure if I, I was cool leaving my job, but I don't know about this part here. Uh, no, no, I'll, I'll get some later. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm no carbs right now. Yes. <laughs> Something else about that meal that is a little uncomfortable and awkward is Judas showed up after he betrayed Jesus. There's only one word for that, tacky. Come on now, can't show up to that meal afterwards. But I love the way that Jesus treats it. 
because Jesus treats it like any parent here would when you go home and there's a broken vase and you know what kid broke the vase, but you want them to confess to it, right? And so Jesus goes, one of you has betrayed me. Problem is, Judas does not confess. Peter's so dumb, he tries to do it. He's like, was it me, Lord? And she's like, no, dude, it's not you. You would know if it was you. I gotta get some new friends. So I am Jewish. Surprise! Uh, what gave it away? The glasses or the everything? Let me finish. The everything bagels that I enjoy. So I am a Jewish person. A couple months ago, somebody wished me a happy Easter, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm Jewish. We don't believe in happiness. So that'll teach them to try to be friends with me. 